Hi all, this is Dr. Reshmi. In this video, we are going to see about fibroid uterus. This fibroid PowerPoint presentation is the continuation of my previous fibroid slide. So now we will see the classification of uterine fibroids. There are three major types of uterine fibroids. Intramural fibroids, submucosal fibroids and subserosal fibroids. So, now coming to the classification of uterine fibroids, this uterine fibroid is classified into body of the uterus and cervical fibroids. So, according to the position of cervical fibroids, they are again classified into anterior, posterior, central and lateral. So, from the body of the uterus arises the interstitial fibroids or the intramural fibroids. So, this interstitial fibroids is again divided into three, which means the submucous fibroids, which accounts 15%, the interstitial fibroids, 75%, and the subserous fibroids, 10%. The submucous fibroids can be either sessile or pedunculated, and here the subserous fibroids can be pedunculated parasitic or broad ligament fibroid. The definition of my of, of each type of fibroids I will be explaining in the subsequent slides. So here the most important thing is that these pedunculated fibroids can undergo torsion which is an acute emergency. So coming to the figo classification of leomyoma or fibroids. Here we have SM which means submucosal and O means others. So, the submucosal, in submucosal, we have three different types, okay. Here, we have 0, 1 and 2. 0 means pedunculated intracavitary, 1 means less than 50% intramural and 2 means greater than or equal to 50% intramural. So, in others, we have 3 which means contacts endometrium which is 100% intramural, 4 is intramural, 5 is subserosal greater than or equal to 50% intramural and 6 is subserosal less than 50% intramural, 7 is subserosal pedunculated and 8 is others which includes cervical and parasitic fibroid. So next we have a different variety called as the hybrid leomyomas. It impacts both endometrium and the serosa. So, this is uh, here two numbers are listed separated by a hyphen. By convention, the first one uh, refers to the relationship with the endometrium which means this two and the five, this is the second one which refers to the relationship to the serosa. This is just an example uh, for the hybrid leomyomas. So, what are interstitial fibroids? So, they are also called as the intramural fibroids. The tumor may grow symmetrically remaining within the myometrial wall. Subsequently, some are pushed outside or inside the uterine cavity. In about 70%, they remain in the interstitial position. So, in this picture, you can clearly see that this is the intramural Fibroid. This is the cut section of, a, uh, of the uterus showing intramural fibroid. So, what are submucous fibroids? The intramural fibroid when pushed towards the uterine cavity and is lying underneath the endometrium is called as submucous fibroids. They make the uterine cavity irregular and distorted. The incidence is about 15%. So, here you can see the submucous fibroids. Next, the subserous fibroid. If the tumor grows outside the peritoneal cavity, it shows itself a bossy growth and it is known as the subserous fibroid. The fibroids are partially or completely covered by the peritoneum. The incidence is about 10%. So, it is subdivided into pedunculated, parasitic and broad ligament fibroid. So, you can see in this picture, this is a subserous fibroid. 
so further extrusion of tumor outwards with the development of pedicle makes it a pedunculated subserous fibroid when a tumor gets attached to a vascular organ and is cut off from its uterine origin it is called as a parasitic fibroid it gets its nourishment from the omental or mesenteric adhesions it is also known as the wandering fibroid so what are broad ligament fibroid they are located between the layers of the broad ligament the true broad ligament fibroid arises from the smooth muscle tissue in the broad ligament and ovarian ligament and it has no attachment to the uterus whereas the pseudo or false ligament myomas are arising from the lateral wall of the uterus and protruding between the layers of the broad ligament so the major it has a very close relation to the ureter this particular type of fibroid so the true broad ligament fibroid will displace the ureters medially whereas the false broad ligament fibroid will displace the ureter laterally so coming to cervical fibroids its its incidence is about 1 to 4 percentage depending upon the position it may be anterior posterior central and lateral so the large cervical fibroids give a typical appearance known as lantern on st paul's dome the small sized so the small sized normal uterus sits on the top of a cervical fibroid mimicking the lantern on dome of famous st paul's cathedral of russia this is just an example they are just correlating between this particular cathedral to the fibroid so what are the degenerative changes seen in fibroid it uh, they are atrophic change sarcomatous change cystic degeneration calcareous degeneration and red degeneration so atrophic change atrophic changes occur following menopause due to loss of support from estrogen sarcomatous change they are very rare and commonly seen in postmenopausal women the tumor grows suddenly causing pain and bleeding hyaline degeneration this type of degeneration affects all sizes of fibroids except the tiny one it is common especially in tumors having more connective tissue the cut surface shows irregular homogeneous areas with loss of whorl like appearance microscopic examination reveals hyaline changes of both the muscles and fibrous tissues so this this uh, this is a pathological histopathological picture showing hyaline degeneration of the fibroid next is red degeneration this is really important because it is commonly seen in pregnancy so red degeneration occurs in a large fibroid mainly during the second half of pregnancy and puperium the naked eye appearance of the tumor shows dark areas with cut section revealing a raw beef appearance often containing cystic spaces the odor is often fishy due to fatty acids the color is due to the diffusion of blood pigments and hemoglobin and evidences of necrosis are also present in red degeneration the vessels are thrombosed but extravasation of blood is unlikely so this is a picture showing the red degeneration of a fibroid so coming to calcareous degeneration phosphates and carbonates are deposited in the periphery along the course of vessels so example is old patients with long standing fibroids they appear like worm stones in a graveyard cystic degeneration it usually occurs following menopause it is formed by liquefaction of the areas with hyaline changes the cystic spaces are lined by irregular ragged walls the cystic changes of a big fibroid may be confused with an ovarian cyst or pregnancy so this is a picture showing cystic degeneration of the fibroid now coming to the complications of uterine fibroids they include torsion inversion of uterus capsular hemorrhage infection and associated endometrial carcinoma so what are the effects of fibroid on pregnancy they are miscarriage preterm labor abruption placenta previa proem 
malpresentation, intrauterine growth restriction, increased chance of cesarean section, postpartum hemorrhage, puerperial sepsis and inversion of uterus. So next, what are the effects of pregnancy on fibroid? So increase in size and softening usually occurs in case of pregnancy. An increase occurs mainly in the first trimester and in 22 to 32 percentage of the cases. Red degeneration is commonly seen in second trimester due to rapid growth and there is congestion with interstitial hemorrhage and venous thrombosis. So very large fibroids can cause impaction in the pelvis. Torsion and infection is also common. Normally, the internal hemorrhage is mainly because of the rupture of the subserous vein. Thank you. So, please like, share and subscribe if you like this video. So, the remaining portions of the fibroid I will be continuing in my subsequent slides.